Welcome to the future where the glass is half full and you'll need new glasses, where you'll be jumping from conclusions. The past is a love and a new future is born. Never before in history has so much meant so little to so many. AD on the radio. Senorita, whoop a blowing up the tweeter, cause it's me up in the speaker. Knocking the mama see the top down like a player, and the sound up in your ears, and it's a dope as rhyme say I run a game like a cheater on ball. The world The world breaks everyone. Then afterward, some are strong at the broken places. Ernest Hemingway. With some words that I feel so sum up. The people of Orlando. I'm not even sure who said it. It might have been Orlando's mayor. But someone in Orlando said that we will not be defined by this. We will be defined by our reaction to this. And... Oh my gosh, are the people of Orlando ever defined by their incredible reaction to what happened to them over the weekend. We are, and I speak specifically to the people that listen in Orlando now, and I'm sure people that listen in other places would agree with me. We are bursting with pride. We are bursting with pride at your reaction to such a terrible situation. To the way your city, your town, your community, your people have united in love, in pride, in community. We are so proud to be a voice in your town. Thank you so much for being a part of our radio family. Now, what is going on in Orlando in the aftermath as you begin to think about all of this? Well, I don't have to talk about it. I don't have to offer possible examples. We've gotten so many emails, so many tweets, so many communications from folks in Orlando saying things like, well, Dave Kavetsky in Orlando. Yesterday, I was so sad. Today, I woke up angry. I know I shouldn't be, but I can't help it. You have every right, every right to be angry. You have every right. To be outraged. That's not without question. It's what you do with that anger that is the important thing. And what's interesting is this is such an interesting convergence of circumstances because there are so many people that have skin in the game on this one. This touches hot button issues for so many folks. It really does. Gun folks think, well, hey, if someone had had a gun, things might, things might have gone differently. If I'd been in there with my gun, things might have gone differently. If something happens... I don't want to be helpless in that situation. Therefore, I'm very glad that I have a gun and I want to protect my right to have a gun. There's people that say, "Mm, if this guy wasn't able to legally purchase the firearm that he used to do this, we'd be in a very different place right now. There's people that say, 
I'm angry because this isn't being identified as an act of Islamic terrorism. There's people that say, I'm angry that this isn't being identified as an act of homophobia, as a hate crime. There's people that are saying, this is just an indicator that we need to treat our mentally ill and identify our mentally ill differently, better. We need to do better. And you know what? The very interesting part about this situation is that we're all right. We are all right to be angry. It's what folks like Dave Kavetsky in and outside of Orlando do with that anger. We'll discuss it next. Where the left and right come together for fundamental truths. AD on the radio, on Twitter at ADSXE. I got an email from a guy called Austin in Orlando who heard the show yesterday. And by the way, Orlando WTKS, Real Radio 1041, first affiliate to pick up this show. And for that reason, Orlando holds a very special place, place in our hearts. Orlando is a city where I spent a lot of time, almost moved to Orlando. What, what do you do when you're a New York kid? You go to Orlando a couple times a year. It's the best. Really is the happiest place in the world. So proud to be on in Orlando. And so humbled to be a voice in this city. As something terrible has evidenced the very best in people there. And I just wanted to I just wanted to say that we couldn't be we couldn't be more proud, we couldn't be more humbled to be a voice in the community of Orlando. We felt that way since day one. Now more than ever. Funkhauser and I were talking about this. Orlando is a city that has embraced us. People, but when you <laughs> when you're on the radio and you get on in a new town, you just kind of accept that people don't know you and are going to have a problem with you. For I don't know. Sometimes it takes like six months for people to start accepting you. Who is this person on my radio? I've been listening to this radio station my entire life. I don't know this voice. I don't know this person. He doesn't speak for me. He doesn't speak for our community. Ugh, get it off. More Skinner, less this guy. We fully expected that going in. I've been on the radio in a lot of different towns. I've changed day parts in the same town. Moved from nights to afternoons. Moved from afternoons and did mornings for a while. And the amount of pushback and resistance that I got. Who are you? Why are you talking to me? What the hell, man? What the hell? Is something that well, it just happens. You get it. But on a station like Real Radio 1041 in Orlando, where the newbies have been there for 11 years. What is it? 11 years the news junkie has been on, Funkhauser? I don't know. All I know is that the, the Monsters and Jim are 20-year veterans of Real Radio 1041. Real! So people are used to- Radio! <laughs> I know he hates it when I uh, do that, but I just love it. It's appropriate there. People people are used to hearing what they hear in that town, on that station. And so we expected resistance, pushback, hate mail for a really... We were picturing this going on for an extended period of time before people got used to us. People have to get used to you, then they start to like you. We were embraced so quickly by listeners in Orlando. I was shocked, shocked how quickly I felt like we became a part of the community there. I was shocked how quickly 
we became a part of that station. And I was blown away by the people of Orlando. Because, look, if you're like me and you do radio, the very best part, the very best part of being on the air is the fact that you get to give back to a community. You get to be a part of a community. I love that. I love thinking that if you enjoy listening to this show, hopefully we manage to turn a frown upside down when you need it. Hopefully we're there to keep you company. Hopefully we're there to provide some conversation, some laughs, maybe some music. But the best part of being on the radio in a town is being able to hopefully leave that world a little bit better than the way you found it every single day. That's why I do radio. That's why I love it. And the amount of time it took for us to feel like a part of the community in Orlando, I'll be honest with you, people listening in Orlando, there's other markets I'm on in that I've been on in for years. I don't feel nearly at home, nearly as at home there as I do in Orlando special town special people an embracing bunch of folks always always been very very special to us to be on in orlando ever since it started there's a different breed of person there maybe it's more accepting maybe it's more embracing maybe it's all of the above but we could tell from week one that we'd landed somewhere special when we landed on real radio 1041 and we landed in orlando can i do it again can i do it again one more. Radio. Radio. So it means a lot. It means a lot. And we are bursting with pride to be a part of your town, to be a voice in your city. And we are bursting with pride at the way you are reacting to this situation. I got an email from a guy called Austin. In Orlando, which moved me to tears. I'll share it with you when we get back. Thank you so much. guy called Austin who said pulse is two blocks from my home three people I know are dead I witnessed the police storming the building when I was on my way home from work the impact that this has had on our community is staggering I honestly can't find a way to handle this but your words are very comforting the helicopters above my house won't let me take my mind off of this. The level of bigotry that still exists in this country in 2016 is mind-blowing. How do I not reciprocate the hate and the rage? And I got a tweet from Dave Kavetsky, who... Rightfully so. I said yesterday I was so sad. Today I woke up angry. I know I shouldn't be, but I can't help it. You're supposed to be angry. There's something for everyone to be angry about here. There's something for everyone to be angry about here. Like we were saying earlier in the show. Folks that... An event like this makes folks... 
that are into guns more determined than ever to hang on to their guns. I will not be helpless in this situation. I will protect my rights to pr protect myself. This guy was on an FBI watch list. Leave it up to the government to protect us and look, what's, look what happens. The FBI let this guy slip through their fingers and allowed this to happen. I deserve. It is my right to have a gun to protect myself so I'm not helpless in these situations. People that say, this guy should not have had a gun. We need to control. We need less guns. We need it to be much more difficult to get a gun. People that are angry, angry this isn't being called an act of Islamic terrorism. People that are angry that this isn't being identified as a homophobic hate crime. This touches a hot button issue for all of us. And you know what? All of us who wake up feeling angry about this are right. You can't deny your gut. You can't change your truth. You're going to be angry. But please, be righteous in your anger. Let your beliefs come from a place of love. Understand people that are angry about this for a different reason than you. We're all in this together. We all have skin in the game. We all have our own reasons that this touches us deeply. Beyond the tragic, atrocious loss of life, this stirs something in each of us and we're all different. But while we're different, we cannot allow events like this to divide us. The arguments, the insults, the division, the negativity, the politicizing that tends to spring up around horrific events like these. I know it's easy to get, get caught up, but please don't be a part of it because these feelings, this anger, it comes from grief. It comes from fear. It comes from passion. These things are understandable, but they do nothing for us. So please be angry. Go with your gut. Feel how you're going to feel. But don't let it divide you from your fellow human being. Keep love in your heart. The fight is in your heart. The fight is in your mind. And you will win. We will win by not letting them take the love from our hearts for all that is good. And all those who are good, even if they believe something very different than you. So please, you might be coming from a place of anger and that's okay and that's allowed and that's understandable and it is your right to be angry. I'd be worried about you if you weren't angry. But keep love in your heart for those that are experiencing the same thing that you are. Even if it sounds to you like they're coming from a very different place. We're all in this together. And if you are someone like Austin, who sent me that email that we read, and thank you for that, Austin. It means the world to think that we might have provided some comfort to just one person. Thank you for that. If you are faced with amounts of rage that you don't know how to handle, you don't know what to do with it, there are people set up for this reason. It's a time of crisis, and there are people available for crisis counseling. The UCF Counseling Services. And if you want any of this information, AD at iHeartMedia, just email me and I'll forward it to you. But the UCF Counseling Services, 407-823-2311. That's 407-823-2311. The Zebra Hotline, 407-822-5036. 407-822-5036. Family hotline, 
4357. And like I said, ad at iheartmedia.com. I'll forge you all the information that is out there. But there are people set up to help you with the feelings that you're feeling right now, whether you're in Orlando or elsewhere. We're all in this together. We're all affected. We're all traumatized in some way or another. We're angry for different reasons, but we're all angry. And it's so important to talk to friends, family, loved ones in these situations. But it's also important to be able to talk to someone whose job it is just to listen. So please, if you're dealing with an amount of anger that you don't know what to do with, make a call to someone. You know what? I'm going to put all this information up on my blog as well, which you can find at realradio.fm so that it's there for you. But like I said, if you need any of it, ad at iheartmedia.com, or you can tweet me at adsxe, and uh, we'll get it taken care of. I think... I think that's it at the moment. I think that's it at the moment. Funkhauser and I were talking about this before we go on the air. And we're here. We are living it with people in Orlando. The only way to do this job is to open your heart. The only way to do this job is to be real. And so we're in it and we are going through it with you. Not arrogant or presumptive enough to think that we understand what it's like to be living physically in that community. But Funkhauser and I, we spent most of the weekend in tears. You feel like a part of a community when something like this happens. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that in any way we can be, we are there for you. In any way we can be there for you, we are. Whatever good it's possible to do, we're here to do. Whatever support we can lend, we want to give to you. So, bearing that in mind, we're here. At ADSXE on Twitter. At Funk FM is where you can reach super producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser. And you can email me, ad at iheartmedia.com. But I think one of the best ways that we can be there for you in a time like this is to, well, are we, uh, are we allowed to, are we allowed to, uh, to go over the events of today, Funkhauser? Can we, can we do can, some news? You, I guess you, you I ready for put, that? I could put that hat on. It's over in the corner. I put on mm-hmm. a different hat, but I could put, mm-hmm. I could put that hat on. Hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the rest of the world. All right, let's see. Opening up the newspaper here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We haven't needed that for a couple of days. Mm-mm. Um, Microsoft is buying LinkedIn for $26.2 bi- billion. Dollars. $26.2 billion. That's crazy. That's crazy. Do you know anything about LinkedIn? Who started it? Like, that's like a it, was it that's some like just 26.2. That's a marathon. 26.2 billion with a B dollars. It was LinkedIn something that, you know, some plucky young college student started up in their dorm room like Facebook? Probably. I was on it early, yeah. though. When yeah. it was like, we're your new social media. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it's for jobs this time. Uh, $26.2 billion. Works out to $1 per email I've received asking to join the network of some person that I haven't seen since high school. <laughs> who do you uh, who do you accept on LinkedIn? You know stuff about LinkedIn. Like, you, you do Oh, it's an open gate Have there you... for me. It's like anybody who's anybody. Find really? me on LinkedIn. Let's connect. Yeah, it's like because you never know who you're going to run into. And I, I like to keep an open, except Twitter. I just went through that and chopped some down. Really? Yeah, but LinkedIn, mm-mm, you never know. What do you, uh, what, what do you base your, uh, your deletion, your Twitter deletion on? Like, what's the criteria? How come I made the cut? Uh, if, 
Okay, so there's like three layers. Layer one is... <laughs> you put some thought into this. If I've met you in person, real life, you're, I'm following you. If I right. met you in person and you're, you're funny online, you're not, you're not tweeting out, tweet, tweet this for 200 extra followers, you know? I just made a million dollars, click here. Those guys are gone. So it's people I know and then people I've, uh, I casually have run into... Uh huh. And thirdly, people that are you know, friends friends of mine that I haven't met, like you listeners out there, you people, you hmm. you out in the sunshine, yeah. I'm you know what? I don't understand you. You know, I don't understand anything about Twitter. All I know about Twitter is for talk radio. It's like it's the greatest. It, it allows people to well, have conversations yeah. and. Also, sometimes you get emails, you know, about, and you don't have time to stop and read emails in the middle of a show. And sometimes people have a lot on their mind, and they they wind up writing you something that's uh, vaguely close to War and Peace in its length and density and viscosity. <laughs> it's like people write a lot, but on Twitter, it, you're, because you're limited to characters, it allows sort of like an ongoing conversation, and I love that. So that's all I really know about Twitter. Twitter became a thing for me m- more when I got into talk radio as opposed to music radio, but. I don't understand the logic in how some people do Twitter. Like, I got followed the other day by Melissa Joan Hart, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Ooh. And when I say the other day, I mean like six months ago. And I was like, no way. This has got to be a parody account. And, oh, no, there's a little V next to her. She's verified that really is Melissa Joan Hart. Maybe she listens to the show. I don't know. Like, like wh- how? Okay, fine. And then I notice, like, everybody I follow, Melissa Joan Hart follows them as well. Like, and it's the same one. It's the Ooh, verified one. Stalker. And there's, I don't, no, I don't think so. I think there's, you know, she's clearly got some sort of Facebook marketing company working for Maybe her. Maybe her assistant is into you. Uh, you know? No, because Melissa Joan Hart, her Twitter account follows absolutely everyone. So oh. there's some marketing company that I, I guess, like, and I get all the same sort of weird, like, hey, for, you know, deep, deep discounts on your bathroom tile, follow us. And it's just, I'm and they follow after, me. I'm going after Facebook next. I'm going to clean that yeah. house, too. And they, they, these bathroom tile places, they'll follow you on Twitter, I think, with the expectation that you follow them back. But I have linoleum on my bathroom <laughs> floor in the home which I rent. So, not so much. <laughs> are the best be a friend be a friend to someone in this time be a friend to somebody reach out if there's someone you've been thinking of someone you've been thinking of you want to just say hey man or hey woman man I've been thinking about you do it now seriously do it now There's people that need that kind of contact. There's people that need that kind of reassurance that there's other folks in the world that are thinking about them that have their backs. It goes without saying, if you know anybody affected by what's happened over the last several days, absolutely reach out to them and say hello. It's weird, isn't it? It's weird. It's very strange how... In times of trouble, we tend to shy away from contact. I I don't know what to say. Anything that I have to say is trivial. Won't I just be bothering them? I have a friend that is going to visit for his last time. 
one of his oldest buddies, guy that is not long for this world, has terminal cancer. And I talked to him about it, and he's like, yeah, uh, he's a business associate. One of those folks that calls me to try and get records played on the radio. And he's like, hey, man, I'm going to be out of the loop for about a week. But if you need anything on this record, that record, and the other one, uh, talk to this person. I was like, oh, you going on vacation? And he was like, I I wish it was that happy. I am going to spend some time with a friend of mine who has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And I was like, ooh. He's like, yeah, I wasn't sure about it at first. Like, I I didn't, mm, I wasn't sure. You know, it's like, it's his family time and it's his all this stuff. And I was like, do you love this guy? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, he's been one of my best friends for years. Does he love you? Yes. Why are you even questioning this? Well, I don't know. It just, you know, I mean, his time is limited. I was like, you go, leave now. It's crazy how we can be all backwards about coming forwards when people are going through tough times. When my cousin passed away a couple weeks ago, my first instinct was like, I, I don't know if I want to call them right now because uh, I'm sure they're going through a lot. They've got a lot to deal with. They've got a lot to arrange. And they, they... No, you call them. You call them is what you do. I sat and I thought about it for a second. I was like, no. I call them and I say, I love my cousin. I'm so sorry he's gone. I love you and I want to be there for you and support you in any way I can. There was nothing I could do, obviously. My cousin was gone. Nothing I could do to help. Nothing I could do to change the situation. But my aunt said to me when I saw her for the funeral, that meant so much. That meant so much to hear your voice that day. It means so much that you're here. So be a friend. Reach out. Call. Go in person. Be a friend in a tough time. It's crazy how we shy away from it. It's crazy how we think we're being a bother, but people want you to be there for them. And sometimes, all too often, there's absolutely nothing you can do other than being there. Friendship runs deep. You know, it's funny. (laughs) Why do I bring up the value of being a friend? The Red Hot Chili Peppers have a new record coming out. I think one of the things that makes that band special is Flea and Anthony from the Chili Peppers have been friends forever since they were kids. (laughs) Since they were kids. And they did this thing where they sang a crazy song where they wrote that they wrote when they were 15 years old on a camping trip. These are guys in their 50s now, and they're still singing it together to this day. (laughs) And I thought to myself, that's amazing. It's amazing the power of friendship. It's amazing what it is to have history with someone. It's amazing what it is to have a friend. Listen to this. We were 15 years old, sleeping on a rock out in the woods. Yeah. Smoking large quantities of marijuana, okay. hiking through the Sierra Nevada mountain range, and we wrote "Hemi Limi." Hemi Limi, up shut da da da, horn door dig a shot on a hoody loady, hoody loady, Bob and Lou. Bob, simple simple blick snort, gorgle snort, all of a certain sort. Hoody loady, hoody loady, Bob and Lou. Bob, are you sure it was just marijuana? <laughs> The value in friendship is something that cannot be measured. Think where man's glory most begins and ends and say my glory was that I had such friends. Yates. And a reminder to all of us to reach out to those that need us. Need us. Now, not tomorrow. Not when you think it'll be more convenient for you or for them. If you care about someone, if you love someone, if they've been on your mind, if you've been thinking about them, reach out today, now. Stop what you're doing, pick up the phone, as long as you're not driving, and make the call.
All right, Funkhauser. What else? What what else is going on in the world? Uh, so so much, so much going on in so the world. So much in oh. twenty seconds. Hey, uh, by the way, um, speaking of reaching out to friends, JetBlue offering free flights to and from Orlando for the family members of anyone who was killed or injured during the shooting. Um, you can get more info at the uh, info at the JetBlue website. We return with more news in a second with Funkhauser. Funkhauser, you ready to read the news? Uh, what if I just say we're going to no- do the news, then talk, and leave you 20 seconds to do the news, and uh, then cut you off again? Well, will that, that, that sounds... Yes. Hmm, I should try not to do that next segment, huh? I, I'll be ready if you do. Funkhauser, I appreciate you. <laughs> There's something happening here, and you should know what it is. <laughs> the dumbing up of America. Now, more AD on the radio. All right, Funkhauser, now, now we can do. Wait, some I'm not news. ready. But, oh. good. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump turned 70 today. Oh, that's right. Everything going on. I forgot that the Donald <laughs> <laughs> turned 70 today. Wrong, wrong. It's a big button. birthday. Some people I just might describe out, it. Okay. <laughs> It's a big birthday. Some people might even describe it as huge. <laughs> I believe he uh, immediately blamed the aging process on minorities and threatened to deport them. <laughs> By the way, I think Trump is sad that his parents aren't still around because on his birthday he used to call them and congratulate <laughs> them. Keep my age 60s again. <sighs> oh. Does, I mean, like Hillary, how old is Hillary? Everybody's 70, except for Bernie, who's who's older and, you know, probably not not going to be president unless there's something that happens that is completely left of center which he is so you never know but um everyone's really old right yeah right i mean compared to yeah. us yeah compared to us compared to I, I i don't know what the average age of presidents has been over the last several years but i have heard it remarked upon that like ooh, yeah this is uh this field of presidential hopefuls, and this is back when we were first starting out, but people were like, this field of presidential hopefuls is uh, uh, getting up there. Past the age where a lot of people don't get the remote for the TV set. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have the finger on the button that could fry us all. We're not sure how we feel about that. Yeah, do, do like, I vote we, or do I call someone to pick them up? There's somebody our age, well, what do you, do, is it 38? 38 is the cutoff age, right? You got to be 38 to be able to run for president. Isn't that what? What a, what a strange number! But I'm pretty sure it's 38. Is it? Uh, probably. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not old enough yet, so I, I haven't been paying any attention. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. I think everyone, like uh, so many people I know, is like, could we just get like a a spry 57 year old or something like that? Like, I'm what's still 60... running over yeah. here? Yeah. Just taking a little break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still running. <laughs> uh. They just give, yeah, and and you don't want to be ageist at all. You just don't. But you know, seventy plus eight, seventy-eight, and uh, I know some seventy-eight-year-olds that are incredibly whip smart and with it, and I would trust them to do things that I wouldn't trust myself to do. I also know seventy-eight-year-olds that well, I saw some recently. I saw some old family friends when my uh, when my cousin passed away, and. This one guy that I know, that I love, that I grew up with, he was like, ah, I'm 75 years old, man. Like, no, no, it wasn't even that. He was like, I'm 68 years old. So you're going to have to excuse me. I'm much slower now, and I repeat stuff, and I won't be able to remember what I told you five minutes ago. So excuse me if I repeat myself during this conversation. I was like, not at all. I'm just so happy to see you. And you know what? He did repeat himself several times during the conversation. He did forget what we were talking about. And that's okay. Didn't change the fact that I love him. 
but he's 68, two years younger than the guy that's running for president. Meanwhile, I have an aunt that just turned 75 and is smarter and more on it and has entirely more energy than I do. No idea where she gets it from. No idea how she's able to do it. An amount of energy that is an amount of energy and with itness that is unconscionable to me at my age. I, I, I don't think I could achieve in a day what she does every single day. And she just turned 75. She's like, this is the first time I'm feeling old. I was like, I, you, you're just fine. Don't don't you worry about it. You got a lot on all of us. So it could go either way, really, you know, in that situation. But uh, 70 years old, that's um, that's enough to give a lot of people cause for pause. And I really don't want this to come across as ageism. It's just I know folks that have deteriorated a little bit. They're a little slower. Their memory isn't so great. And they're younger than that. So, so yeah, uncomfortable. But, uh... There you go. Donald Trump turned 70 years old today. Happy birthday to the Donald. There will be no piñata at his party. He had it deported for obvious reasons. Go on. Uh, We're not 40 yet, you and I. And 30 years ago mm -hmm. was a whole different world with a whole different stuff. Mm. Mm. And there, people, hmm, I don't know, 30 years is a long time, but for some people, not long enough. Where are you going with this, Funkhouse? That's it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's, uh, things were different 30 on. years ago? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know what I've uh, started binge watching? What? Th this is how not with it I am when it comes to watching the cool new shows that all the kids are taking in. Um, I just started watching The Sopranos. Oh, yeah. Because I, I never watched it while I was out, but it's you know part of Amazon Prime. So I was just like, I need something. Okay, I'll, I'll watch this. It's not bad. I don't think it's the cinematic tour de force that everybody painted it to be at the time that it happened. But it's definitely a page turner. Definitely keeps me going. I, I enjoy watching it. But to me, that's a show that it's not that old. And there's all these things with, like, pay phones and answering machines in it. Like, like to make their mafioso-esque calls, they got to go to a pay phone. You know? It's like, it's the whole different world in a, a very short amount of time. Because what that show? That show ended in, like, 2007 or something like that, right? Something like that, yeah. Just yeah, ended. Yeah, and, and there they are. Like, you, I mean, obviously, they're talking about illegal stuff, but, you know... Um, <laughs> There they are using pay phones to mm. conduct their dirty mafioso business on the show. And I was like, wow, must be different if you're uh, if you're part of organized crime now just because there's not a pay phone you can go to. Like, they, they don't exist anymore. Now you have to use, like, encrypted messaging services over the interwebs or whatever. But anyways, go on. Oh, by the way, since we're talking TV, programming note, this time next mm -hmm. week, Ben Gleeb on the program. To Who's promote, Ben Gleeb? He's the host of a show on Game Show Network called The Idiot Test. And next oh. Tuesday is a big one mm. where you see me and Canadian mm. Jean, uh, what, uh, contestants to win our chance at uh, $10,000 if we answer yeah. a series of things correctly. To, uh, this time, 7.30 on the Game Show Network. Check your local last things. So you're going to go compete on Idiot Test with Canadian Jane, and we're going to have the host of Idiot Test on the show. Yes. Outline the sequence of events here. Well, the promo should be coming out soon, so uh, uh -huh. we'll tweet out the little promo. and then. But uh, is, is, is the host of the show coming on our show before or after you go on his show? Oh, he'll be compete? on both. So he'll be here next week, Tuesday morning, uh -huh. or, you know, for the Tuesday show. And then uh -huh. he's also going to pop in on the Wednesday show to talk about uh, some things that we weren't, you know, we want to leave oh, Okay, the... so you're, you're going to talk to Ben Glebe. We're going to talk to Ben Glebe about, about uh, going on the show. Then you're going to go on the show, and then we're going to have sort of a wrap-up with Ben Glebe where he goes, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, this is where you messed up. Yeah. Oh, oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm so uh, nervous, and I, I wonder what will happen. Uh, <laughs> and ten, you could you could win ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand thousand if we get it all right, and it's very hard. Uh -huh. So, and wait. after you divide that with Canadian Jane, that'll be five thousand dollars. And after you pay taxes on it, it will be around twenty seven hundred dollars. Dollars, which still you know significant. You could pay some bills for twenty seven hundred bucks. But it's amazing. It's amazing how fast ten grand turns into a whole lot less than ten grand in these situations. Mm -hmm. I hope you win, Funkhauser. I really okay. hope you win. 
Okay. Uh, what else? A Trump campaign worker said Chris Christie has become Trump's manservant and was sent yeah. to McDonald's to pick up Trump's food order. Yeah, Mc- and I think McDonald's. they wrote about this in The New Yorker as well. <laughs> like, I mean, look, The New Yorker is Sausage going to, McMuffin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I disavow cheese. Uh, <laughs> what size do you want? Huge! <laughs> He wants to huge your size, his order. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris Christie, how the mighty have, have fallen. If we are to believe this uh, this article saying a campaign worker says he's being sent out on errands. He's a manservant. He's an errand boy. And he was sent out to pick, uh, pick up McDonald's for... <laughs> he was sent out to pick up McDonald's for the Donald. Get yourself something. You look hungry. Yeah, how the mighty have fallen. I think the joke was on Trump, though, when Christy came back with an empty bag. (laughs) (laughs) Go on. A guy in Texas who the cops were chasing for speeding ditched his car and tried to hide in a field. Yeah, this guy did this in uh, Bryan College Station. Not far from not far from where this show airs in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Guy guy in Bryan College Station. Cops were chasing him for speeding. He ditched his car and tried to hide in a field and he got turned over to the police by cows. <laughs> It sounds like the start of a joke, but what? it's not. It's it's a true thing. The cops found him because a bunch of cows were staring right where he was hiding in the field. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, yes, um, he was in fact cited for a moving oh, violation. Oh no. We're gonna do that. Uh, it was such yeah. a great show, and we're going that yeah. way then, huh? Cows turned someone over to the cops. Unheard of. Uh, can you just? <laughs> Can I go home? He was utterly dismayed. (laughs) Really, he shouldn't have been speeding. But at this point, the point is moot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't deserve news Uh, behind it. uh, uh, I told a buddy about this. I told a buddy about this. And he was like, oh, it's like an episode of Animal Farm. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the cows turned someone over to the pigs. I was like, oh, my Uh... God. All right, go, go on. What else? I can't. What? Okay. Uh, Kim Kardashian was furious at her brother Rob for posting on social media about his engagement to Black China before telling the family. Mm-hmm. Yep. Angry. She reminded him, it's family policy. You make big announcements via sex tape. Via sex tape! What are you thinking? No, she's go not going to do that. Mm. Remember? Um, oh, no. no well, that's Kylie that Jenner. The, yeah, I get them all that, confused. That's... It, it all just one big amorphous Every time I hear another one of the sisters, I hear the Batman in between it. <laughs> Go on. What else? Mel Gibson is making a sequel to Passion of the <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, literally, oh, God. <laughs> that was a really good, uh, that was a really good impersonation. You like that? I, uh, it's not funny. I did. I, I did. You know, it's funny because we talk about this all the time. You can't do impersonations of people, but you can do impersonations of other people doing impersonations of people. Like, yeah, didn't you say you just... learned how to do your, your Bernie Sanders by doing an impersonation of Larry David doing Bernie yeah, Sanders? All the same, right? Uh, it's perfect. Spot running, on. Trying to. What? Yeah. Ooh. I, um, I can't do an impersonation of Lars Ulrich from Metallica. But I did Jim Brewer's impersonation. I did an impersonation of Jim Brewer doing uh, Lars and James from Metallica the yeah. other day on the air, and it went over huge. I feel like I have to credit Brewer for that. I should. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was a passable Mel Gibson. Was that? Uh, did you learn how to do that impersonation uh, based on the uh, based on the recording? What based recording? recording? What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. The there one that recording? his wife made of him. We'll have to talk like, about that another time. Or I no, his mistress made of him. It, yeah, anyways. Mel Gibson making a sequel to Passion of the Christ. It will focus on his resurrection, ascension to heaven, and uh, continuing role in all those NFL touchdowns. Hey, thank you so much for being a part of our radio family. Orlando, our heart is with you every single day. We are privileged to be a voice in your town. Always love, never surrender. Thank you. you know how a lot of times you feel like-